I'm so sorry, juniors. We got interrupted by a phone call. I think I turned my phone on airplane mode. I think somebody said if I did that, that I wouldn't get interrupted. So I hope that's true. Look at yourself in the glass. You're dirtier than I be. They kept the baskets full. Father and Royal never had to wait. When the wagon was full, Father drove away in a hurry. It was mid-afternoon before he came back, but Royal and Almanzo and Alice filled the wagon again while he ate some cold dinner, and he hauled another load away. That night, Alice helped Royal and Almanzo do the chores. Father was not there for supper. He did not come before bedtime. Royal, Royal set up to wait for him. Late in the night, Almanzo heard the wagon, and Royal went out to help Father curry and brush the tired horses who had done 20 miles of hauling that day. The next morning and the next, they all began loading by candlelight, and Father was gone with the first load before sunrise. On the third day, the potato train left for New York City, but all Father's potatoes were on it. 500 bushels at a dollar a bushel, he said to Mother at supper. I told you when potatoes were cheap last fall, they'd be high in the spring. That was $500 in the bank, which was a whole lot of money back then. It's not too bad right now. Let's see. They were all proud of Father, who raised good potatoes and knew so well when to store them and when to sell them. That's pretty good, Mother said, beaming. They all felt happy, but later, Mother said, well, now that's off our hands. We'll start house cleaning tomorrow, bright and early. Oh, boy. How Monzo hated house cleaning. He had to pull up carpet tacks all around the edges of miles of carpet. Then the carpets were hung on clotheslines outdoors, and he had to beat them with a long stick. When he was little, he had run under the carpets, playing they were tents. But now he was nine years old, he had to beat those carpets without stopping till no more dust would come out of them. Everything in the house was moved, everything was scrubbed and scoured and polished. Boy, I need them here. I did a little bit yesterday, but there's a bunch more to do. All the curtains were down, all the feather beds were outdoors airing, all the blankets and quilts were washed. From dawn to, to dark, Almanzo was running pumping water, fetching wood, spreading clean straw on scrub floors, and then helping to stretch the carpets over it and then tacking all those edges down again. Days and days he spent in the cellar. He helped Royal empty the tr vegetable bins. They sorted out every spoiled apple and carrot and turnip and put back the good ones into a few bins that Mother had scrubbed. They took down the other bins and stored them in the woodshed. They carried out crocks and jars and jugs till the cellar was almost empty. Then Mother scrubbed the walls and the floor. Royal poured water into pails of lime, and Almanzo stirred the lime till it stopped boiling and was whitewashed. Then they whitewashed the whole cellar. That was fun. Mercy on us, Mother said when they came upstairs. Did you get as much whitewash on the cellar as you got on yourselves? The whole cellar was fresh and clean and snow white when it dried. Mother moved her milk pans down to the scrubbed shelves. The butter tubs were scoured white with sand and dried in the sun, and Almanzo set them in a row on the clean cellar floor to be filled with the summer's butter. Outdoors, the lilacs and the snowball bushes, I have those, hydrangeas, they're pretty, were in bloom. Violets and buttercups were blossoming in the green pastures. Birds were building their nests, and it was time to work in the fields. And now that's all. Sorry, I had to, we got interrupted there, but next time we will read about springtime. Hope you have a lovely Tuesday or whenever it is that you are hearing this. October 15th, I believe. Be sweet. Don't be ugly. Love to all. Bye-bye.